Okay, so to recap with this, um, so we've got this lantern model and we've just unwrapped it. So the UVs look something like this. Cool. So they've been laid out in a particular way for ease of use in Photoshop. So if I go to my perspective, so we have the top bits, so I'll just highlight them. So we've got the top bit there, it's kind of organized. We've got the ring um, up here. And then we have these bits here, so they're organized quite well. These are pretty straight, there's a bit of overlapping, but these are on the interior corners. So not too bothered. These interior shells as well, they're actually the hidden bits that we won't really see to camera. Um, these bits here as well off this top little section. So uh, I think this is the bottom. Yep, that's the entire bottom bit. Um, this probably could be done a bit better. We could square it off a bit by cutting down these diagonal edges, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. That's fine. This is has been combined as one object for the purpose of baking the ambient occlusion. Um, we could leave it as separate objects. So I save the scene and then I combine them. And the reason for that is when I um, when I'm baking the map, Maya, I mean Arnold, generally seems to look at the specific object only that you have selected. I could be wrong about that, but that's just from the test that I was doing. So anyway, um, assign a new material. So this is for baking and ambient occlusion. So I go to Arnold, AI ambient occlusion. I'm going to close the UVs. So we have that. Uh, so now I've got two on it, in fact. Um, let's hit render. Cool. So that's the ambient occlusion. I'm fine with that. And we want to bake this. So we'll go to the Arnold tab. And where is it? Render selection to texture. You pick your file. Pick the resolution. So I did 4K. So that would be 1496. It's quite high res. Um, so for this, I probably could have, in hindsight, probably picked maybe 2K and up the samples a bit. I've taken a look at the texture I've already generated. I'm not going to render another one now just because it takes a bit. It's quite self explanatory if you're using multiple UDIMs. Press all UDIMs. And, but I believe the times I've done it recently the objects all need to be combined. So you might just want to save version up and combine them just for this baking process. Um, so yeah, then hit render and then we're done. So we'll jump into Photoshop. And this is the end result that I had. So that's 4K. I didn't change the samples. So this is our texture. I've just remembered I did not capture the UVs. So I will open the UV editor. So before I jump back into Photoshop, I'm going to take a snapshot and I'm going to save this into my texture area. So I'll just call this lantern underscore UV. Can't spell UV, lantern underscore UV. And how big do I want this? So I think I'm going to texture this at 4K, seeing as I've did the bake at 4K, and I'm not going to change the image format. The image format is Maya if the size is 4096 by 4096. So I would say texture in a higher res, and then when it comes to exporting, this asset is quite small in the shot, so I could texture at 4K and just export. Um, at 512 by 512, so that's really small. So I'm going to hit apply and close. So now I can jump back into Photoshop and I'm going to drop in my UVs. So I've just dropped them into a new tab and then I'm going to press Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and Control V. Um, what is that saying? Okay, I wasn't happy there for a second. 
to do with color space. I should probably check what uh, I'm in RGB. Okay, that's fine. So I can't really see the UVs at the moment. So I'm going to make a new layer just to make everything clearer. And I'm going to reset on the left hand side my color palette to black and white. And oh, okay. Yes, yeah, because it's given me an error because the uh, there's documents in 32 bits, whereas the UV if file was uh, like 8 bits. So now, so I'm just going to use this other document. So I've just copied my ambient occlusion into my Maya if setup. So this layer zero, this is my UV. So I'm just going to rename that and add an adjustment layer. So it says half moon at the bottom. I'm just going to pick curves and holding down alt and hovering between UV and curves, I get this link. So then I select and it says that the curves are linked to the UV. So then I can now brighten them or darken them depending on what I need. I'm going to drop some black down there and then brighten my UVs just so I can see what is what. So now I can, I have some textures in a folder, so I'm just going to locate them. So I've got this bare metal, I'm just going to drag in and then copy it across. I don't like dropping textures straight into my working area because it creates a smart object which I'm not a fan of. If you if you do do that, it'll, you'll get a weird symbol and then if you want to edit it, it'll just say, do you want to rasterize this anyway? Which is basically flattening the image into more more of a usable format. So this bare metal that I've got, it's not that high res, so I'd probably want to. So I'm gonna, I'm putting this over, these are the outside. Um, so this is some sort of bare metal. I, uh, it came from textures.com. I don't really know what the metal is. So this, I'm just quickly going through this just see how fast I can get a texture out for the purpose of this demonstration. So we're going to have a bit of a seam uh, going along there, even though the UVs are combined. They're blending kind of okay, but I could fix that with a clone stamp. So I'm just pasting my metal texture into these areas, just where I know they're going to be used. So I'm just doing this very quick. So all the bits that I know are going to be, in fact, I could just paste this everywhere. Go to town. So this is pretty much, as you can tell, going to be the base color for everything. But the reason I kept it small and I'm pasting it around is just because this uh, texture dot um, texture size is 1,600 pixels by I don't know, 700 something like that. Cool. So now I've got all these layers here. Uh, I'm just gonna shift combine merge layers. Uh, I guess I'll rename this to be base metal. I should probably create a group. So let's use groups as our channels or textures. So let's call this base underscore color. And we'll create a group. Might as well create the groups now. So I know that I'm going to have a roughness channel. So I'm going to call this roughness underscore channel. And let's create another one for 
spec no sorry this is metal so metallic channel and one more roughness metallic and bump let's do bump so now we can keep these separated into groups So in the base color, I'm going to pop this ambient occlusion render and straight off the bat, I'm going to just multiply. So now that's giving us some depth into our area. So where it's dark, that's exactly where it was dark in our render that you saw a moment ago. So we're already getting some nice depth in there. And what we could also do is if I copy and paste that, and add an adjustment of invert. So we can now do the opposite thing, pretty much. So apply that down there, and let's overlay. What am I looking for? Actually, I'm going to leave that for the moment. Um, it's uh, I might actually use that as a mask later. So for the moment, I'll I'll leave that. And so now we need to add some dirt into this. My computer is not having fun. So I'm going to drag a dirt in, just a picture of dirt again from textures.com. It's one K tileable. Although I tested the tiling, it's not perfect, so it's a bit of a lie. Okay, so now the question is, I need to remember which which bits were going where. So where the shadows are, we know they're dips in our geometry, so that's a good starting point. So this bit at the bottom, from memory, I know it's the it's the ball bit at the top of the lantern. So I could just whack down this mud texture a few times. There we go, perfect. And I'm gonna merge these two layers and let's try overlay, see how that looks. Okay, that's interesting. It's quite light. So let's try multiply. Um, I don't know, yeah, multiply, fine. Let's try it at 50%, that's a bit too faded, 75. Maybe if I leave it, I'll leave it on normal for the moment because I'm going to erase away at this. So I'm going to press E, which is the hotkey for the eraser, then go to my brushes. And, oh damn it, I don't have Windows Ink turned on. Man! Oh shit! Damn it! I can't find it for the moment, so screw that. So I'm just going to have to deal with no pen pressure, so some of you won't have that anyway. So I'm going to scroll down in the brush settings to brush tip shape. And I'm just going to pick a noisy one and go to, oh, where is it, is it in transfer, no. Brush tip shape, there should be it's a rotational, I just wanna make sure it's rotating for every, oh, angle jitter, so by default in mine I have it to 100. So that just means it's going to rotate every time a brush is applied, because a brush is essentially just a stamp that's continually being applied. So I'm gonna make it quite big. I'm pressing close bracket to make it bigger and open bracket to make it smaller. And I'll just type in 50 on my number pad and that changes the opacity at the top. So I'll put that to 50, maybe 30 because I've got no pen pressure. So this is gonna be quite aggressive. 
So I'm just smoothing out the edge and then I'm going to tap, like just stamping out around that. So I'm just fading it, um, fading it back a bit. I'm going to lower my opacity to 20, just fading it even more. And I think what I'm going to do is apply mud to all the areas that I want and then put the mud into a group so then I can do my adjustments on top of that group. Because I was, this needs to be darkened pretty much. So I'm just going to grab my texture again and apply it to a different area. I can't actually remember what this bottom bit, what this bit was. So I think it might be. It's the top. It's the top. top. Yeah, I think so. It's the top bit. Okay, so based on that, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think we can fade out. So this middle bit would be hidden. So the dirt, if we had dirt at the top, it would fade down. There's not much shadowing for my ambient inclusion, but there is a bit here. So something like that. And then if I just go around in a circle and just fade away, that should work. So with 20% on, I'm still using my eraser tool, so hotkey again is E. So I'm just going to fade around this, stamp a few times just to break it up so it's irregular. Cool, that's fine. I have another, so that's the, what is that? The, uh, because I've still got Maya open, I'm just going to double check what the bottom bit here was. Where's the bottom bit here? Okay, so that is great, great. So now I could put dirt all the way along the bottom of these, these sections. Okay, so merge those layers. Um, I don't need most of this, so I'm going to change my opacity to 100 and just annihilate most of this. If you want a straight line while you're doing this, if you hold down shift when you, so you press your brush down, um, Press the brush down and hold down shift and you'll get straight line. And you can also go from one end to another. So if I select it here and then hover, go over here and hold down shift before I click. When I click, it will generate a straight line as well. So I'm going to change my opacity to 20 and using the shift key, I'm going to fade out this line. So I'm going to do that first and then stamp back, use that stamping method. So, okay, so I'm going to make the brush bigger and still got a really low opacity for this. And the reason for copying and pasting the texture many times along is because we're, I am still aware of the scale. We don't want the scale to be quite odd. And also we want to use as, keep as much of the texture resolution as possible. So we're working in 4K, but that, that picture was 1K. So we want as much information kept as possible. Because if we think about it, this whole texture here would be, um, each quarter of it would be about 1K. So. <coughs> Okay, so this bit would be the very top of, so that would be 
slightly high on the lantern and then this is the very top. So I want to put a bit of dirt just on the top of it. So I'm doing this very, very rough. So then change to 20%. So I just hit 20 in my number pad. And whenever you do that, it changes the opacity just at the very top of Photoshop. Great, that'll do. Fine. Now add some dirt to this bit. Like using the shadows as reference, this section leads to the underside. So the under, the actual under section of the uh, of the lantern is here, from what I remember. If I can double check, so this bit here should be. Oh, it's not. What is this? Oh, this very small bit up there. And that's the bottom, so I could just put mud all over that. And probably up there, maybe. Oops. Okay, so that is... So I've tried to lay everything out in an understandable way. So there could be dirt at both ends of so on these on these bits here. So that's coming down. And the other bits. Whoops. There we go. So I'll keep my opacity at 20%, actually maybe 30, 30%, break up some of this edge. Change it back to 20 or maybe 10. So I'm just keeping it low just because I'm being, I'm rushing this a bit more, but at the same time it's not specifically something I need to do neat so, so I'm just pasting this to the areas that I want so what we might have to do for these bits where I'm placing this dirt is we need to be aware that there are seams either side so whenever there's a cut in our UV so these edges Technic in the 3D world, these edges are next to each other. So we should try and, you know, try and maybe line up, get the same um, thickness of dirt at these edges. So as an example, if I decided I want dirt exactly there, then if we do the same on these sides, then it should line up vaguely, but that's probably wishful thinking. So I'm going to put the opacity to 50, break away some of this. Using the shift key, I'm going to line my brush up um, with this white line. And all this over overspill doesn't matter. We can forget about it. So I'll do the same here. I'll line up. I'm trying to place my brush onto that white line. And I'll change to 10 on the opacity. Brush again. Just keep brushing, fading it. But I've pr I'm pretty sure that we're gonna we're gonna notice that. Fifty percent on the brush. 
Let's break away some of that and then change the opacity to 10. And again, break away. Uh, the dirt all over here, the only reason I'm gonna erase this is because um, I'm being really quick and lazy about this, so I don't, uh, if it's overlaying UVs, this is all being textured into one separate area. I'm just doing it very fast. So there's limited organizing. So these internal bits here, the very fringes, they will have some dirt on. This bit, which is the top bit. I'm not sure if I want any dirt there, apart from maybe the edges. So in this instance, I could just find this layer, which is that one, and sort of work my way out. So it's just the very edges that have some some mud. So I'm chaining to 25% on the, on the opacity. Working it back. And cool. So like that. And oh, damn it. I need to delete this, erase this area. Capacity to 25. Cool. Great. So all these mud layers I can now merge. Depends how you want to organize things, I guess. So that's mud. Uh, what was the other one? This is AO, ambient occlusion, and base metal. That's what we have so far. So that's pretty good. Um, so because of the time at the moment, I might just quickly export this and see how it looks just for demonstrative purposes. But before I do that, I'm going to, let's say copy and copy all those layers. So I pressed Control A, Control Shift A, so select all layers, visible, and then control C, and then control V. So now I have this single layer with everything. So I'm gonna be cheap and dirty with this. So I'm gonna put these this combined layer into the roughness and fiddle around with some of these adjustment layers just to see what result I can get if it's, if it's what I'm looking for in terms of roughness. So the roughness, the white bits are going to be rough, the dark bits are not going to be rough. So that being said, we primarily want the dirt. So you can see the dirt is kind of black. So I actually want to invert this. So invert and probably add some curves. So the metal bits, that bare metal that I put on, they're going to be darker. So the majority of this in the roughness is going to be dark. So this is going to be pretty shiny. Whoops. Oh, damn it. Did I, I included the UV in that paste. Schoolboy error. Come on. Hide the UV and turn everything back on just to copy and paste that. So I want all these base color layers. So Control Shift A. No, what is it? Control A. Damn it. Control A. Control Shift C. Control V. There we go. And then I could just hide my base color turn all these adjustment layers back on. So that, that would be our roughness. So dark areas are shiny pretty much. And I'm gonna be cheap with this again. I'm now going to 
do control A and then control shift C and control V into my metallic channel. And because I want the opposite of roughness, I'm going to flip this. So I'm going to invert this. So that means the lighter bits are going to be shiny and the dark bits are going to be non-metallic. And I'm going to add curves because I want to accentuate this. Great, great. And for the, yeah, because I want to be quick, I'm, I'm going to leave any other channels for the moment. So we'll just do those three. So we've got rough base color, roughness, and metallic. So I'm just going to save these out. Uh, let's do TIFF. I'm just going to do 8 bit TIFF. So when you're saving as a TIFF, you can turn off layers, just save as copy. And this will be lantern underscore. I'm looking at the metallic channel now, so metallic.tiff. Cool. And because everything's grouped, then then I can just you know manage it easier. So let's do a tiff again. And this will be roughness, so lantern underscore roughness dot tiff. God damn it, I included the layers, discard layers, save as copy, fine. It's just about saving memory. I don't want to make textures that are unnecessarily large. So save as copy, and this is our base. God damn it, Photoshop is making noises. Okay, lantern, underscore base color, base color dot tiff, cool. Turn off layers, cool, great, yeah. Yep, 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 let's go. So quickly jump back into Photoshop, into Maya, can't think. And I need to, I need a light. So let's go Arnold, lights, let's just put in a sky dome. Cool, and I'll put a color, I'll just find, find one that I've used recently. I think I got this from HDRI Haven, so I can't remember. So I'm going to assign new material. So assign new material, go to Arnold tab, go to shader. Let's go to AI standard. Let's name this to Lantern Shader. And Let's open up the hypershade. And I'm going to select in and output connections on this. Um, okay, so for color, let's load in that base color that we just saved. Great. Name name your textures when you bring them in. It's gonna get confusing otherwise. Like I hate seeing scenes that just have a million textures that are called file. So the roughness tab, load in the file. Roughness. Uh, change the file name to Roughness underscore map. Where's the metallic? Metalness, that's what it's called. Let's load in the metallic map we just made. Cool. We didn't make a specular map, but let's see how this turns out. Metallic. I think the roughness map will have some of the information that we could use for a bump map. So although we haven't created a bump map, we could possibly just hijack this and use it, you know, so it saves time and effort. 
by default when you put in a roughness map and metallic Arnold looks for an alpha and you get an alpha when you've got 32-bit texture so if you're texturing in Mari and you export a 32-bit if you're working in 32 bits you will probably get an alpha with that in this instance we don't so this is out Photoshop so we just have some 8-bit cheap ass image comprised of Google images so what that means is we need some sort of float value so we can get this this uh, information from just using a single color channel because this has no alpha so if I render this there's gonna be uh, zero roughness same applies for metallic Arnold goes straight into the alpha and it will find nothing there is nothing for it there so the lantern uh, let's just see how that looks let's, uh, minimize the hype shade has that been applied I've got the lantern shader it's saying I've got two shaders on there so it's weird um, I'm gonna go to to remove unnecessary shaders go to edit um, delete unused nodes and delete all by type shading groups and materials oh shit <laughs> I didn't apply that flipping um, uh, idiot that's what you get when you work too fast AI standards so I'll just drop in a new shader that is applied to the object and so it's there so now I'll call this again lantern underscore shader and let's go base color I'm gonna middle mouse drop into the shader you could do this as well um, then I want the out R color to go into uh, is that the roughness yeah roughness map no specular roughness what am I doing that's why I was confused for a second and the metalness we want the out R color to go into the metalness cool 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 right you do get a sample in the top right hand corner of the hype shade but I would I wouldn't trust it lies okay let's render this mofo my computer's just thinking about it uh, it popped up with a little box because by default it likes to convert the textures into TX files which work better in Arnold but TX's have their own um, issues as well so I didn't actually color correct the dirt so that's annoying oh, balls so my HDR my sky dome I mean I'm gonna change the exposure to minus down don't change the intensity um, that looks fine for like the amount of time that was put into it a few minutes it's a good starting point so you can see in my color my texture from textures.com this base color um, because in the metallic map we were making the majority of it white apart from these flex these flex of rust stuff that was on the picture so we've color corrected the picture to give us the information we want so that's not too bad and you can see the dirt's being placed in the right sort of position if we look in the UV editor and turn on the texture mode um, let's take a look UV editor uh, texture this picture one that should be loading from the shader or is it this one what is this one doing there we go so it, sh it displays our texture in there the base color one with our UVs so that's pretty useful let's just take a look at the top so I'll render the top uh, 
So you can see some of the bits that I was, we could actually try and work out um, exactly what bits were done, but you can see, so that probably needs to be pulled back, but this fading off there, that's worked, that's worked pretty well. And let's take a look at this interior section. So some of these bits have different UV size, which means that the resolution is obviously going to be lower and higher in certain bits. The mud texture has no blending mode on as well, so it's very noticeable. And the map for metallic, we can certainly push that a bit more, although I have dimmed down the light. So yeah, this mud definitely needs a blending mode and I've lowered the intensity of the light. So if I reset the exposure, then we'll see how shiny this actually is. Yeah. It's all quite low res. So, you know, this was all done pretty quick. So the UVs could probably be laid out better. Like we can see where there should probably be more information as well. But this is um, being used for quite far away in the scene. So even further away than that. So we'll probably see this asset like there. So depends how much you want to care in terms of um, how much work you put into the asset. But for literally a few minutes work, I think that's that's fine. But there certainly could be some more love put into that. But that's a really quick example of texturing in Photoshop. So doing the UVs, laying them out in a nice, understandable way, and then texturing them in Photoshop.